Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'll be reviewing some of the Zuvmore Afghan Rosewood brushes today. Zuvmore is a brand made by Shosholong. The Zuvmore Afghan Rosewood series has pure copper ferrules and Afghan Rosewood handles with Zuvmore engraved on the bottom. They're weighted and I really like the weight of them. The striations all vary as wood varies. The handles are longer than your typical Japanese brush handle and they're straight. The bottoms of the handles are rounded. The combination is gorgeous and I think Shosho Long did an amazing job with the design. The series has my favorite handle and ferrule combination from the brand. The heads from the series are mostly made out of scroll hairs and a gray scroll and saibi goho mix. I mostly talked about saibi goho hair quality and scroll hair softness and comparisons in my Shosho Long and Chin brand review video, so I'll elaborate and add more details of the hair quality here. As I previously mentioned in the other video, I think Shosho Long has done a good job at stabilizing their hairs, saibi goho in particular, since that's what I focused on in that video. Their current gray and red scroll hair quality varies on the batch of hairs per brush. I don't want to call it inconsistent, but let's just say there's variation. Some are a little softer than others, which is the same as Fude. Slight hair batch variances are perfectly normal since these come from individual animals and not one monster squirrel. The softness scale from softest to least soft is red scroll brushes, gray scroll, then gray scroll, and saibikoho mixes for this line. Check out my other video for hair softness details and comparisons. I'll start sequentially from the smallest to largest number. The Z03 is a flat angled gray scroll powder brush. I'm not an angled brush shape person, so I don't have much in my collection. The only other angled scroll brush I have is an old Chosho Lang red scroll one. Red scroll one was in a brush guard. As I mentioned in my other video, it's softer than the Beautylish Ox brush and some of my other Chikahoto Gray Skull face brushes like the MK1 and MK2. It is less soft than my Z4. It has a hair length of 45 millimeters, which is the same as the Koyudo Akabeko brush. It has medium resistance. It doesn't splay out much when pushed down. I was hoping it would be denser, but it's on the light side. I'd say it's light to medium in density, leaning light. It performed decently paired with loose setting powder. It feels smooth when you use it on the side and sweep it on your face. I also tried it with a soft press blush both on the side and on the tips but didn't like it for that. It didn't apply well and the Red Scroll Flat Z05 blush brush performs better for blush. I was referring to the one on the right which is the Z05. I thought I would love it since I love my old Red Scroll angled face brush so much but that one is softer, fluffier, and airier feeling. It's not airier right now since it was in a brush guard but it's very silky and feels extremely smooth on the skin. These hairs are an airy feeling, but they do feel plush. I adore the Red Scroll one because it feels like feathers on my face. I like it enough to keep it and think people would enjoy this one in general. If you don't need much coverage or like brushes on the light density side, then it would work for you. The Z05 is a medium petal shaped Red Scroll blush brush. It has a hair length of 41 millimeters. The body fans out post wash and is dense, but since the hairs are kind of loosely packed together, it feels a bit airy. I typically don't like square shaped cheek brushes, but I wanted to try this out, especially since Shosho Long only has three red scroll brushes in their lineup. Here it is compared to the Koyuro BP18 for size comparison purposes. The BP18 is made out of gray squirrel and is smaller. It's also more densely packed together and more compact. It has low resistance and the hairs bend easily. The hairs are wavy like the Chikohoto Kazan line. 
I can feel the hair tips on my sensitive skin on a bad skin day like with the Chikahoto KZ2. Old Shosho Long Red Scroll hairs are straighter and softer compared to this one, but the current Shosho Long Red Scroll hair is still very soft. Since the head is larger than I typically use for blush, I use it vertically to pat the color on, then I turn it to the side to blend. I also have used this and the other flat scroll brushes here on the side, but it's awkward because I have to turn it and hold it. It picks up an ample amount of soft pressed powders like the Illamasqua blush. With an hourglass blush, it mainly grabs the lighter portion and will deposit the glitter particles onto the face. Red Scroll typically applies the lightest out of all the scroll hairs, which means you'll have to build up the color to the pigmentation level that you want. Although the Zuvmo Red Scroll hairs and the Chikohoto Kazan hairs pick up more than your typical Red Scroll brush. I love that it applies softly yet pigmented. The color doesn't just stay in one spot upon application. It's dragged and blended in the direction you apply it and the edges are automatically diffused. It's a stronger blender compared to Koyudo's Red Scroll hairs, which requires more effort to blend out. I'm very happy with it and recommend it. The Z06 has the same exact shape and measurements as the Red Scroll one, but in Gray Scroll. These two are cousins. It's denser feeling than the Z05 on the right since the hairs are thicker. My Z05 flares out a little bit more. The hairs are loosely packed and the top is on the airy side. The hairs are also wavy and it's medium in resistance. It's medium in density and looks denser from the top compared to the angled Z03, but I think the Z03 is just more compact or densely packed. The hairs on my Z06 on the left are less soft than my Z03. The closest brush I have is the Koyudo BP18, which is smaller and the hairs are more densely packed together. The Z05 head fluffs up a lot more, but the BP18 on the left was also laid flat on one side. I prefer the smaller size and more densely packed head of the BP18. This brush is basically the baby version of the Beautylish Lunar New Year Ox brush. They share the same shape and hair type, but the Ox brush is softer and much denser. The hair length of the Ox brush is 47.625mm, which is a little bit longer than the Z06 at 41mm. The Z06 is on the right. I've tried it with loose powder and hourglass and Illamasqua blushes and prefer the Z03 for powder since it's silkier and the Z05 for blush. The Z05 applies blush better in my opinion, which is surprising since Red Scroll has less blending power compared to Gray Scroll brushes. The Z06 will also pick up the glitter from hourglass blushes and apply it to the face, although I think this brush applies more glitter compared to the Z05. I'm not a fan of this brush and like it the least out of all the face brushes here. I may have liked it more if it was softer, but even then I would probably have still preferred the Z05 because Red Scroll is much softer than Gray Scroll. The Z07 is a round Red Scroll cheek brush. I had almost written this brush off since I already have a Red Scroll cheek brush from Shosho Long, but I'm so happy I picked this up. It has a hair length of 35 millimeters. It's bundled a bit unevenly, but it doesn't affect the performance. It's very soft and I can't feel the hair tips on my cheeks while I can with the Z05 flat blush brush. It's dense with low resistance meaning it's flexible and splays against the cheeks. It covers a good amount of cheek space like the Chikohoto RC2 due to the flexibility of the hairs. For size reference, I have small hands. The Chikohoto RC2 on the right is also round and has a hair length of 33mm. 
Both have not been in brush guards. The hairs on the Z07 are also wavy, just like the Z05. I think all of the scroll hairs I got from Zuvmo recently all have wavy hairs. The RC2 on the right has more resistance, since gray scroll is more elastic than red scroll. This brush fluffed up considerably post-wash. Since red scroll hairs are so fine and thin, it feels airy even though it's dense. The Chikohoro KZ4 is the closest brush I have to compare it to. I think the Zuvmore African Rosewood series came out way before the KZ series. Shoshalong's red skull hairs are redder than Chikohoro's Kazan hairs in general. The KZ4 shares the same shape and hair length at 35mm. Here are the handles for length comparison. The Z07 is larger and has even less resistance than the KZ4. While they share the same shape and hair length, they perform very differently. Unlike the Chikohoto KZ4 that doesn't work well in circular motions, this brush can actually do that and has no problems being used to buff. The hair tips don't break off during use and it feels smooth used in circular motions. This is not a hair type I would buff intensely with since they're delicate, so I like to use it in a three dot padding motion, then gently blend the colors together by sweeping the brush back and forth. I paired it with an Illamasco powder brush that's very finely milled, soft and powdery. It provided a soft and subtle buildable finish. I love this brush so much I spent a good half an hour admiring it and gushing over it. It's the bomb. There aren't a lot of brushes that make me feel like this anymore, but this one and the Red Fox powder brushes both ignited a fire in me again. It's a popular brush and frequently sells out for good reason. I highly recommend it if you love round cheek brushes and red scroll. The Z10 is an angled highlight brush made out of a mix of Saibikoho and gray scroll. It has a hair length of 33 millimeters. It's similar to the Hakuhoto G511 on the left, but the angle is a bit different. It starts at a lower angle compared to the G511. The G511's hair length is shorter at 28 millimeters. It's also larger than the G511. Both are soft, but the G511 is a little bit softer. They're both soft enough for sensitive skin. The G11 is denser, the hairs are more densely packed together, and the body is a lot firmer. The G511 has a good amount of resistance when used on top of the cheekbones, whereas the Z10 bends into the face easier. The Z10 feels feathery, while the G511 doesn't feel as feathery because it's denser. I think the Z10 has a larger goat ratio compared to squirrel, while the G511 has a larger squirrel ratio. You can tell by looking at how many white hairs are in the Z10 compared to the G511. The Hakuhoto has more black hairs. It has lowish resistance. I love these types of brushes for cheekbone highlight. I used it with a Kaleidos highlight. It feels quite nice swept across the skin. It can pick up a lot of the highlight and is able to blend it. I also used it with a Milani highlight which is very smooth and gives a strong stroping effect. This brush can also grab a good amount of pigment and apply it onto the face. I had a hard time finding a brush that would apply this highlighter smoothly, less intensely, and blend evenly into the skin. I love intense highlighters, but the color of this typically makes it look like there's an intense strip of gold on the top of my cheekbones. This is my favorite brush to use with this highlight. I was actually not a fan of this highlight until I used it with this brush. I used it with the Glow Color and Glow Extreme in the Natasha Denona Bloom Cheek Palette. It grabbed and applied both shades beautifully. For comparison, I used both brushes with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nicole Glow Kit in the color Glow Getter. The G511 doesn't pick up as much pigment as the Z10 and mainly applies the glitter onto the face. It only picks up more pigment if you really press the head firmly into the pan. The Z10 on the other hand has no issues grabbing the pigment with light to medium sweeps into the pan due to the larger ratio of goat hairs even though it's less dense. It applies pigmented in the targeted area. I prefer the finish of the Z10 with this highlight over the G511. It's amazing and I love it. If you love highlight brushes or want a cheaper alternative to the G511 then I highly recommend this one. The Z13 is the brush I accidentally cut while opening the package. It's a favorite of mine despite the messed up head. It's a flat tapered gray scroll eyeshadow brush. It's large sized and on the medium side of density. It 
It has a hair length of 17 millimeters. Here it is compared with the Fude Japan L on the left. The Fude Japan L is denser and has longer hairs at 20 millimeters. There's medium resistance on the lids. It grabs soft pressed shadows and applies them effortlessly. It feels really soft and plush on the lids. The Z17 is a tapered crease brush with a round barrel. It's also made out of a mix of gray scroll and Saibikoho hairs. The hair length is 17 millimeters. It has medium resistance and is on the dense side. The tip is flexible, but the body is quite firm. I actually don't have a brush like this in my collection to compare it to. I used it with matte ColourPop shadows and it has no problems grabbing pressed powder formulas like that. The body is firm when used on the side, so it's not my cup of tea for the crease. It does get into the eye socket, but not too deep, which is nice at least. It's a color placer instead of a crease brush that can blend for me. It doesn't blend well, so I'm not a fan of it for crease work, but it places nose contour well. The tapered point and firm body gives it the resistance needed to apply nose contour precisely. Here are the two Zuvmore Gray Scroll and Sebikoho mix brushes that I have. I think it doesn't blend that well compared to the Z10 because this one has more Gray Scroll hair in it compared to Sebikoho. My favorites are the Z05, Z07, Z10, and Z13. The Z05 is on the larger side for a blush brush for me, so it just barely made it into my favorites, but I adore the finish it provides. I plan on picking up some more from the line. I hope this helped you in your decision making process. Please give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.